Hello friends and welcome to another day of crochet and crime. My name is Hazy Baby. Today is the 18th of April. Yep, yep, it's still April. <laughs> it was April yesterday, it's April today and it will most likely be April tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so welcome to another day of, like I said, crochet and crime. I am working on Evie still, all this pink, so much pink. Anyway, look forward to seeing my videos. Yep, I'm telling you how to feel now. Deal with that. Uh, and I shall see you in a minute. Okay. Hello and welcome to my channel. If you are new to my channel, please like and subscribe and do all that, you know, nice, lovely stuff. Um, I am still working on Evie, as you can see. The uh, side pieces have grown exponentially during the night time. My magical crochet fairies have been crocheting. I'm the magical crochet fairy, just in case you were wondering. The crochet fairy is me. It's me. I'm a solo crochet fairy. Alrighty, I'm just going to be working on the border because uh, this is finally the right size for the edges. So these will go on and then I am doing four squares in the middle, attaching them to either end and then attaching it to the bigger square and then we'll go around the bigger square. So that is an update on where I am with Evie and now let's get you your first little bit of crochet and crime news for the day. <clears throat> so this first part is a mum of murdered toddler <clears throat> was killed in a Perth car crash. So a 31-year-old woman whose toddler son was shaken to death by her then partner more than a decade ago was killed in a car crash in Perth. So Kerry uh, Bodney's life was cut short in a horror crash at an intersection um, in Perth just before midday on Wednesday. Police said uh, she was the passenger in a black BMW sedan when it collided with another car. So that is absolutely tragic. Uh, but most accidents are tragic by nature, I suppose. Uh, the car was allegedly being driven above the speed limit and ran through a red traffic light at the intersection just before the crash. So, yeah. The red light camera and a tree were completely flattened by the impact. Uh, it's further alleged that the driver had fled the scene. So, yay. What a great human being. No, nope. Sorry. I distracted myself then. Yeah, so, um, but they were arrested a short time later and they were taken to a hospital for treatment. So I'm glad they were able to get treatment because no one deserves death. But I am mortified that they fled the scene. Maybe they didn't know what they were doing, you know, partially unconscious or whatever. But yeah, still, like I said, tragedy. It's been the second time, I suppose, since her family have been faced with tragedy, tragedy as Carrie's two-year-old son, Robert, was shaken to death in 2012 by her then-partner, Wayne, who was sentenced to 15 years behind bars. So, Sorry, I'm just trying to remember the pattern that I did from last night, <laughs> as you can see. Following Wednesday's crash, a man in his 30s was rushed to uh, Sir Charles uh, Hospital while a man in his 80s and a woman in her 50s were both taken to a uh, different health campus with non-life-threatening injuries. 27-year-old man, the alleged BMW driver, has been charged over the incident and will face court by phone um, later on today, including... Uh, failing to stop and failing to render assistance. He was refused bail and will face court again in May. So hopefully I will have more of an update about the consequences of his actions a little bit later uh, in May. 
Okay, so this next story is um, uh, kind of like a cautionary tale, if you will. When camping in Australia, it is very important that you check your surroundings, know where you're camping, and uh, keep yourself and your children safe. So a toddler has been mauled by a dingo at a popular camping ground um, in WA and has been rushed to hospital. This was on the 15th of April in 2023 so this year it's just a couple of days ago so a dingo that mauled a toddler at a popular camping ground in western australia has been euthanized which is good because once they get a taste for the bloods uh, they are no longer safe um so as tragic as that is for the dingo who was just hungry i get it but he can't be going around eating kids all right just calm down dingo a two-year-old boy was attacked at the Dales campground in the state's north on Friday night. The child was taken to uh, Tom Prince Hospital where he was treated for serious but not life-threatening injuries. So the other day I was talking about making sure that your children are safe around dogs. Um, a dingo is essentially just a wild dog so please please be super careful when you're camping. Like I said the dog is just doing what dogs do he's a predator by nature so it's up to us as parents to keep our children safe and they probably were keeping their child safe i have no idea the circumstances so please don't at me while the level of a little boy's injuries remains unknown he was discharged from hospital which is good so that means that he's not too severely injured thankfully uh, more than 100 campers were at the campsite on Friday night uh, where the dingo sightings are not uncommon. So they did know that there were just dingoes around that area. Um, and there was, like I said, 100 other people there. So, However, the Department of Biodiversity, uh, Diversity, sorry, Conservation and Attractions has reassured residents that dingo attacks are rare in this state. And even if they are rare, I feel like people should just be vigilant that they do happen and just acknowledge that that's one of the um, perils, I suppose, of camping, and especially in Australia. So due to the aggressive behaviour of the dingo uh, and the fact that it remained at the campground following the incident, so even after it bit the child, rangers uh, were prepared to humanely destroy the animal as soon as it was safe to do so. So... Uh, like I said, I don't ever want to see an animal be destroyed, but if it's already uh, showing those like attacks, then yeah, it's probably going to be attack. So the attack comes five years after a 55-year-old woman was seriously injured by dingoes at the Teller Gold and Camping Mine. The fly-in, fly-out worker was mauled while eating lunch at a designated safe eating area. So, you know, even if you are safe, you still get attacked is the thing. Uh, anyone who encounters a dingo at a campground should report details to the campground staff and try and, I don't know, get away from them if possible. Don't run. They will chase you. Um, yeah, I know. How scary does Australia sound? I promise it's not as scary as it sounds, okay? This next story, like the last one, is about a child. Again, it's about... Um, I'm just going to give you a little pre-warning this one. I don't really have too much details on, but hopefully, like I said, I'll get more details as it goes. But a child is in a serious condition after being found unconscious in an Adelaide river. So this one was a little bit more than a week ago. And I haven't seen any updates, so... A toddler in a serious condition after being found unconscious in a small river in Adelaide's north on Easter Sunday morning. The little boy was aged under two and was discovered by his parents um, in the Little Palmer River just after 9am after going missing from their family home. So they couldn't find the little boy after 9am. Maybe he went out on an Easter egg hunt. I do not know what's going on. There you go. He'd gone out with one sibling, but only one of them had returned. So both had left, but only one returned. By the time the youngest was found in the water, he was unconscious. Paramedics raced to the scene and performed CPR. 
And a witness uh, said that she saw the mother in tears and watched as she attempt to resuscitate her own child. Absolutely devastating. Um, she said, I feel really sorry for the family. I really do. A car belonging to the family was left teetering on the edge of the embankment as the parents rushed to get the child. So they just like, you know, literally drove to the spot and just like yeeted themselves out of the car. Which you would. Um, it was a very dramatic moment, apparently. They realized that he was there, so they rushed. It was a spare of the moment and they wanted to get out, they said. The boy was rushed to the Royal Wilbert... Let's try that again, hey? To the Royal Women's... One more time. Once more with feeling. To the Royal Women's Children's Hospital, where he remains in a critical condition. So South Australian police are... What have I done here? Nope, that's not what I wanted. See, even I knew that was wrong. South Australian police are checking security camera footage in nearby houses um, to ascertain what actually took place. So, hopefully we'll have some more information about that and I'll have an update on that boy's condition as the weeks go past. Like I said. No. What have I done? That's correct. Ugh, like I said, this is what happens when you do your own pattern. And that's why I try and do all of the things that I do at the same time. Because otherwise I get myself a little bit confused. There we go. That's better. All right, moving on. Okay, this next story is not about a child, thank goodness, but it is about a mother who has been scammed. So she is crying, which anyone would be if she had lost this kind of money. Uh, no money left, a Adelaide mum's warning after she was scammed regarding a car. So, I don't know if you guys know, but car scams have been going around for years, bruz. But, yeah. An Adelaide mother of four has warned others to beware, saying that she was left with no money and no car after realising the paperwork for the vehicle that broke down days after she bought it was fake. So, Andy Hansen bought a $4,000 Holden from a man via uh, Facebook Marketplace. So you've got to be really, really careful when you're buying cars over Facebook Marketplace. It was advertised as having been serviced with no issues, you know, because no one is going to blatantly admit that they have, you know, a dodgy car for sale. But anyway, uh, she said she bought the car with all of the money that she had left, which she was fine with, obviously, because she needed a car. And the guy assured her that it was a good car, advertisements, the paperwork and everything, gave her everything. But only two days later, the car broke down. So she took it to the mechanic and was shocked to be told that the list of problems was more than a page long. She was told that the invoice for the service and the seller claimed to be carried out was fake. So it wasn't that the paperwork was fake, it was that the services that he said that... um, had been carried out on the car was absolutely fake. So, yeah. I suppose in that sense, guys, if you do want to buy a car and they are willing to give you the paperwork um, for the service, then ring the number that is on the invoice and just double check. I mean, it's sad that we have to do that in this day and age, but yeah, you should. The more they delved into the car, the more they found. Um, So basically, she's in line for a new motor, but she's got no money left, as I stated earlier. 
so no way to pay for it. So the family lives in um, Adelaide Hills and without a car, they had to stop work and is struggling now to get her four children around. She pushed for the Royal Automobile Association of Adelaide to um, help her highlight any issues that were taken out of it. She doesn't want others to make the same mistake, so she doesn't want others to be totally broke like she is. You know, fair, fair comment. She said she should have waited. She should have gotten a complete check, which you can do, and I 100% recommend doing. Um... I keep confusing myself. This is what happens when you have your own pattern. I'm so sorry. Just give me a second. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Okay. There we go. I'm back on track. Uh, but they tried... Like, I really feel sorry for her because she was obviously trying to get a car for her children to you know do all that lovely mum stuff that mums do but unfortunately she was ripped off as they say and there's always going to be scumbag people like that out there I mean I bought not that this is anywhere near that kind of tragic but I bought a dishwasher once um, and the people said that they were moving so I paid for this dishwasher and I thought, oh, great, this is really, really cool, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, long story short, I get the dishwasher home, my husband hooks it up, and it turns on and everything, because obviously we checked that before we left. Um, but it flooded water all over the kitchen. So <laughs> that was a fail. I didn't pay very much money for it, but when I did contact them, they were no longer at that house. So... Yeah. Um, police said that the Adelaide Hills man has now been reported for dishonesty dealing with documents, so fraud documents, and an investigation is ongoing. He's expected to be summoned to appear in court at a later date. And that would be not for selling a fraudulent car, although that's pretty bad enough and immorally wrong, but it would be for the forged documents stating that the car was in pristine working condition. And therefore, road safety. So, I hope she gets the justice that she deserves. But I highly doubt it. Hopefully some nice Samaritan will feel sorry for her and help her out. And now I'm going to show you what happens when you make a mistake all the way back at the beginning. This is why I check my work, people. I'm just going to undo the whole thing and go back to the beginning because I did this side different than the other side more well, than the other one that I did the other day all the way back at the beginning I get that I actually did if you'll have a look in this one I did a double crochet first and in the other one I did a half double crochet first so I can't have them being different guys they have to be the same that's how it works Basic maths. Alrighty, so this next story is about a suspicious fire which caused a million dollars in damage at an Adelaide school. As you can tell, some of these stories are well out of Adelaide today. So police are investigating after a part of a school in Adelaide's north was burned down overnight, leaving teachers hashtag devastated. I mean, it, that's not what's written there. I just, you know, embellished. Because it would be hashtag devastating. Especially if you worked at that school. Um, so John Hartley School in Smithfield Plains, uh, hold on, yes, that's it, 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 hold on, <laughs> da, 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 da. and then those two, and then into the corner, yes, yes, that's why I went and made a mistake, because I was going into here instead of into here. What a silly duffer. What a silly Billy. 
Ta-da! Da, 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 da. Okay, so the fire caused uh, an estimated a million dollars worth of damage after breaking out at 9.40 p.m. on Easter Sunday. Unfortunately, the building has su- sustained severe damage and the staff and students could not salvage some items, which is absolutely devastating. Uh, police are appealing for anybody who has any information at all about the school fire and the fire is being treated as suspicious and investigations are continuing so that was a short one and hopefully they find the culprit of whoever lit the fire hopefully it wasn't lit hopefully it was just an electrical fault um I'm just thankful it happened while children weren't at school and while it was over the Easter holidays. And while it's a million dollars worth of damage, it's a lot easier to rebuild than it is to get human life back. In fact, it's impossible. So, that's good. Another short one. So, a body has been found in search for missing paddleboarder, 61-year-old, at a New South Wales tourist spot yesterday so the body has been found when they were searching for a man who was last seen paddleboarding at a new south wales tourist spot so steve wood who was 61 disappeared after he went paddleboarding on saturday morning near uh, crescent head the newcastle man and his board and his paddle were found later by friends Uh, Police divers then found the man's body at Ryan's Creek at 3.20pm today. Sorry, yesterday. And a report will be prepared for the information of the coroner uh, to the New South Wales Police. So we don't know what happened. Don't know if he just sustained some sort of medical problem. Uh, or he fell and hit his head, or we don't know. But hopefully I will have updates regarding that story. Like I said, nice quick one. This one reminds me of the bum fights from, like, um, Futurama and stuff. It's just absolutely... I know that term is derogatory, and I feel so... I'm sad if I have offended anyone. I, that is not my intention. It just reminds me of that episode that's all so pleas for help after a string of attacks on busy melbourne streets so local businesses and obviously not the businesses but the business owners since the businesses are anatomy objects and can't talk for themselves so the business owners are begging for help following a string of violent encounters on a popular melbourne street so anti-social behavior towards locals has spiked Um, on Fitzroy Street in St Kilda. So CCTV footage obtained by Nine News shows locals being subjected to physical violence, including items being thrown, screaming, and even one man being punched in the head. A number of encounters have involved members of the homeless population in the area. Uh, Locals claim... Uh, Charlotte Fragman, who owns the uh, Claremore Pharmacy, said that the incidences are making her lose business, at least on the long-term customer per week. It's just out of control, she said. It's not like we don't have hearts, we have the biggest hearts, but on the other hand, we're watching the whole business being destroyed and we can't afford it. And basically, she's saying it's not just their livelihood now, but their superannuation in the long run. Police say that the situation is difficult to navigate because the key is that they're trying to encourage those affected uh, to enter rehabilitation programs and shelters because the people who are causing these um, fights and stuff are homeless population. So without their consent, it makes introducing these people into these environments and facilities really difficult because... They, most of them, or some of them, well, especially these ones, are being violent because they are 
they have mental health problems, they're stressed out to the max. I mean, I wouldn't be the nicest person if I had to sleep on the street. So, um, the appearance here is that they might well just think that they can move on, but that's not going to solve the problem. That's just going to move the problem from this street to another street. Plus it's dealing with human rights as well. So Port Williams Council Deputy Mayor Andrew Bond said yesterday, well, it's not great uh, that the public are having these encounters. It is a reflection um, on the social situation that is happening currently. And he's saying that the um, it's not criminal to be homeless. It is criminal to accost people, but it's not criminal to be homeless. And uh, we have no idea if these homeless people have been accosted by others and that's why they're um, being so agitated, aggravated. Um, we have no idea. So you can't judge a book by its cover. We don't know all of the details, but uh, violence is never the answer. Okay. All right. Hashtag mum facts. I don't know why I'm talking in hashtags. It's not like you can search it. A Melbourne man admits to murdering his estranged wife in the home that they once shared. So this story is obviously about murder. One of my favourite things to read about. A man has admitted to the murder of his estranged wife at their family home, confessing Moments before the jury was selected for his trial. Zoran Padilos... Zoran Padiloski was due to face his first day of a murder trial in Victoria's Supreme Court yesterday. But he pled guilty right before um, the impanelment process started. So impanelment meaning the engaging of a panel, a jury panel. So the story goes that he went to Elaine Padlevich's home in Melbourne during, um, in the suburb of Mill Park at 7.45 a.m. on July 14th in 2020, where she was alone because they were no longer together. Domestic violence is a huge problem. A huge, huge problem. She was choked to death and then he tried to move her body to the basement of their home that they once shared to conceal it. I don't know. The facts of the case were previously revealed by the Justice uh, Christopher Braith. Colleagues of Miss of Mrs. Padaldowski who worked as a teacher aide at the Plenty Park Primary School, became concerned when she didn't show up for work on April 14th, which was apparently not her thing. She was always on time for work. So they called her mother, who went to check on her but could not find her after searching through the property. Police went to the home later that evening and found her body in a storage room in the basement. I'm just so thankful her mother didn't find her. As, as horrible as that sound, I, you know, you have to be thankful for small things. And I am thankful that her poor mother didn't find her body because that would have been absolutely tragic. I mean, it's already tragic. It would have been, like, you know, more tragic. Oh, so the pair married in 2002 and they had a son together before they separated in 2018. So that poor kid, Lau lost his mother and his father because now his father's in prison. What a douche canoe. I know it's my favorite thing to say, but in this case, it doesn't even, there's not even enough douchery for that to be an annoying thing. So last week he was offered to plead guilty to manslaughter, but prosecutors refused this and a jury was impaneled for the murder trial on Thursday. So he tried to get out of it, you know, pretty lightly. He was like, eh, what can you give me if I say I'm guilty kind of thing? And they're like, nah, bros, if you're guilty, we're going to take you to court. <laughs> 
sung to the song, Take me to church, I'll worship like a dog at the shrine of your life. Yep, that happened. So instead it was, Take me to court and we'll put you in prison for life. (laughs) Ah, You're welcome. Can you tell I'm sick? Anyway, so last week... (laughs) Like I said, the jury was discharged, though, on Friday but after a legal issue during selection where Justice Bale excused a retired police officer from serving on the jury. He said uh, he excused the former cop because there could be a reasonable bias for his apprehension bias as he sat on the jury, which I kind of feel like you wouldn't be able to put that bias aside. You know, you've arrested Probably hundreds of criminals. And, yeah, look, I couldn't be biased. That's why I could never be on a jury for a rape case. Uh, However, Justice Beale agreed with the lawyers from both sides to start with another jury to avoid any issues and to track down uh, Pervetsky, who has now been convicted. He was taken back into custody and will next face court on June 23rd for a pre-sentence hearing. So, in case you guys don't know, that's how courts work. So, if he was considering that he was, if he was still claiming that he was innocent, they would have gone ahead with the jury and done a whole trial, wasted a whole bunch of people's time, energy, effort, and money, um, and then probably most likely been found guilty because he was the last person to see her. So, you know, and they must have had a fair bit of evidence if the... Um, prosecutors weren't willing to take a plea. So, yeah. Uh, And then, because he's pled guilty, he will now just go back to court um, in June, like I said, uh, for his sentencing. So, ha-ha! Take him to court, put him in prison forever! Yeah, that sounded way. You're welcome. You're welcome. You know, welcome to crochet karaoke, guys, where I sing in my off-tone voice because I'm sick. Yay! Alrighty. So, I know I'm making light of this, but it's just because I do that when I feel uncomfortable, and I feel very uncomfortable with this domestic violence situation that's happening in Australia and continues to happen all over the world. Um, and if you are feeling like you are being domestically violated or if you feel unsafe in any way, both emotionally, physically, spiritually, um, I do encourage that you ring 1-800-RESPECT. That's 1-800-737-732 or visit the 1-800-RESPECT.org.au website. Um, If it's an emergency, please call triple zero. If you are scared of your partner, please seek help. There are people out there who want to help you. Um, And if you are feeling sad and low and you need someone, uh, contact Lifeline on 131114. So 131114. There's also a um, men's referral service for men who feel like they are also being domestically violated. Because remember that, you know, violence doesn't have a gender. Although it is mostly women who are, um, you know, the percentage of women who get, who are domestically violated is higher than the percentage of men. It still does happen to men. So there is a designated hotline for men who are seeking help and counselling. And that one is 1300 766 491. That's 1300 766 491. So if you're a male and you're listening to this, and you um, don't feel comfortable ringing the 1-800-RESPECT number, then please do ring that number because that's what it's there for. It is there to help you and no one should have to deal with violence. No one. Especially from people who so-called love us. So please seek help if you need it. So over the last couple of days I've been talking about... um, kidnapping that's been happening in in Queensland and New South Wales and people have been kidnapped and their parts are being chopped off. <laughs> so a man has finally been charged after kidnapping a pair uh, that he had mistakenly thought had large sums of cryptocurrency in New South Wales. 
So he was under the impression that they had large sums of money. They didn't. And, yeah, unfortunately, horrible things happened to this couple. So, police have charged two Sydney men after they allegedly kidnapped and tortured two people who they incorrectly believed held large sums of cryptocurrency. A 26-year-old man and a 24-year-old woman were allegedly kidnapped from a car park in January. This is the one I was talking about yesterday. Um, They were tortured for 36 hours where the man's finger was allegedly amputated. So they they chopped his fingers off, like I said yesterday. They're just chopping off body parts, apparently. Um, It is one of five gang-related confirmed suspected kidnappings in this year alone. I spoke about that yesterday. Like I said, it's only April and we've already had five kidnappings. So that's, you know, alarming in itself. But they've actually said that it is gang-related, which I thought it might have been yesterday. Police allege on January 18th, two men wearing balaclavas grabbed a man and woman as they walked towards a car park in Fairfield and forced them into the vehicle to a property in Swan Bay, Newcastle. Two days later, they the pair managed to escape and call a family member who contacted police. In that period, they were being held captive, held captive there. They were tied to chairs and demands were made for ransom, large sums of money of cryptocurrency which had them totally confused because they had no idea what the dudes were talking about because the criminals had mistakenly kidnapped the wrong people. So well done. Well done. Talk about dumb criminals. Talk about, oh, I feel so sorry for the dude who lost his finger. I mean, I I would have felt sorry if he was legitimately the right person, but yeah. So attempts were made to amputate... Uh, the man's middle finger using garden shears, resulting in significant injury to the man's finger, uh, which meant that he had to have surgery and insertion of a metal plate to reattach the finger. So detectives under strike force Biju, I think I try and go with Beetlejuice, executed two search warrants of two homes in Smithfield and Cartwright on April 4th. A 24-year-old man and a 25-year-old man were each charged with a range of serious offences, including taking or detaining in company with the intent of ransom, occasioning bodily harm, participating in a criminal group and using stolen motor vehicles. The older man was also charged with one count of damaging property by fire over a separate incident. He's just like an arson where he used a Molotov cocktail um, and threw it towards a home. Both men were refused bail when they appeared at the Fairfield local court earlier this month. They will reappear before the Parramatta local court on May 1st. So the police said that they've taken substantial action against 10 alleged offenders in three separate kidnapping investigations. And they can say that organised crime groups have multiple levels of coordination where they're targeting at every level of the syndicate. So they have made arrests on the muscle, but they're actually looking for making arrests on the big wigs, you know, the big dudes who run everything because there's no point taking out the middlemen. They'll just get more middlemen. So I hope they do figure it out. And I hope they... <laughs> well, I don't hope that they find better criminals, but jeebus. Come on, Barry and Larry. What were you doing? Idiots. Idiots. Can't have a good criminal these days. Jesus. If you were listening to my podcast yesterday, you will remember the woman who... Sorry, the man who was hit by a driver on purpose. So he was cycling along on his bike and... the A car pulled over and let him pass. After he passed, they mounted the curb and ran into him. So yesterday, I was appealing for anyone who had any information regarding that. But guess what? You don't have to worry anymore because they have caught her. So a Melbourne woman has been arrested after tearful cyclist speaks out following a hit and run. So obviously, he must have gone on the news Um. Yeah, he's got gravel rash, like serious gravel rash. I don't know if you know what gravel rash is. It's basically when you fall off your bike and 
like scrape off a full layer of skin and it kind of looks like a rash but it's from the gravel hence the gravel rash part a woman has been arrested after a cyclist was knocked off his bike in Melbourne South East. So Robert Clark's bike was dragged 100 metres along Douglas Street in Dandelong after he was knocked off the bike at about 6.40am on Thursday. Last Thursday. So police released footage today, or yesterday actually, that appeared to show a white Mitsubishi Lancer accelerating towards the 59-year-old um, mounting the curb uh, and hitting him, like I said, you know, like she just like, boom, hit him. A stunned Clark had been seen on his hands, like, you know, just being like, what the flip has happened to me? Um, yeah, poor dude, like, I feel so sorry for him. That's That's absolutely horrific. Anyway, he says that he could see, like, you know, Things just flashing past him. He he was like disorientated. All of that jazz, as you would be, you know, when if someone mounted a curb and knocked you off a bike. Poor dude. I just yesterday, like I said, I felt sorry for him yesterday, and I'm so glad that they found someone. So it was just this realization that he's still there. That was the first thing that he thought of. He suffered nasty cuts and bruises. With police saying that he was lucky to be not even worse hurt. 40-year-old woman from Dandelong came forward to police after footage of the incident was circulated. She's been arrested and is currently assisting police with their inquiries. So, yeah, I wonder what her stupid excuse will be. This next story comes out of Sydney and it's regarding five teenage girls who have been arrested after a police pursuit and a crash in a bushland chase. Let us continue on. So five teenage girls have been arrested in Sydney's West after a police chase, like I said. The police dog unit was travelling along the Great Western Highway near Blacktown when they spotted a Toyota Kluger SUV that they believed was stolen. They tried to stop the car but were unsuccessful. A short time later, the same car collided with a truck and the five occupants fled on foot. Thank goodness they were not injured. They ran into a nearby bushland where the police dog squad pursued them. All five teenagers were arrested and are currently being questioned by police. I mean, I am so glad that none of them were injured. I am glad that the truck driver wasn't injured. Oh, so many things to be happy about. I mean, I'm not happy that they smashed the Kluger. I'm sure the people are really, really upset. But I'm just glad that no one was no innocent person or even guilty person was seriously injured. The 16 year old driver of the car has been treated for dog bites. (laughs) The dog got her. Yay. Um, And she suffered during the arrest. Investigations are ongoing. So hopefully I shall have more updates about that a little bit later. But yes, good job, teenagers. Good job. Next, we are off to Queensland, my hometown, and we're talking about a bunch of ram raids that have been happening on businesses here in Queensland, which is like super strange. So yeah, CCTV footage has been released showing the moment an alleged stolen car slammed into a pharmacy and then a bottle shop in Queensland. I don't know what they're looking for. Drugs are not cool, okay? Drugs and alcohol, that's what they were looking for. What do I mean? I don't know what they were looking for. So a recent spate of ram raid break and enters, basically, has been happening in businesses. Police allege that a light-coloured sedan was used to ram AFS Pharmacy on Dean Street in Rockhampton at around about 3.25 on Monday morning. Nothing was stolen and the vehicle fled the scene. So they literally just ran into the building for shits and gigs, who knows. Despite this, the CEO, Mark Boyd, said that he's been left with damage bill in the thousands, so it's really just reckless damage at this point. So they'll still be charged, because it's criminal. Insurance will assess it tomorrow, and they've got no idea about the cost, but they say it's going to be in excess of around about $150,000, which you would expect, because, you know, they smashed all the security doors and everything. 
Boyd said he did everything to protect his business from theft, um, claiming Ram Raid uh, insurance, apparently, and aggravated theft are happening more regularly. I didn't know you could get individual Ram Raid insurance. But that makes sense. I mean... But how prevalent is it that it's an actual thing? I didn't even know that it was a thing. It's something that happens with greater regularity, he says, and he's concerned. And so am I. Someone, please think of the children. Um, so when you've got a couple ton of SUV speeding in reverse, there's not much you can do to keep that outside. And I agree with the business owner. That is true. So Boyd praised the efforts of his staff who pivoted quickly and managed to get operations running through the back door within hours after the attack. So this is the bottle shop. The bottle shop was targeted minutes after the pharmacy. So I don't know if their first intended target was the pharmacy or whether someone just made a stupid mistake and thought it was the pharmacy. I'm going to go with the second one because it sounds like a cooler story. Uh, Police said that 20 minutes after the attack on the pharmacy, the the same alleged stolen, sorry, a different car, a stolen silver Holden Accolade, Arcadia, yeah, not an Accolade, an Arcadia, was deliberately driven into the front of a bottle shop on Farm Street. Police believe that the incident was performed by the same drivers from what they can tell on CCTV footage. And they think that they are linked. So I don't know whether they were just, like, testing out the pharmacy to see if they could, like, break in with a car. I mean, it'll work. It's tons. They had allegedly stolen a quantity of alcohol before fleeing in another getaway car, which was a white hatchback. So, yeah, extensive damage was caused to that business as well. And police are urging anyone with any information to please come forward. And a second attempt to ram raid occurred in the boat, Deception Bay, north of Brisbane, at around about 1.13am on Monday. A 32-year-old man is under police guard in the Princess Alexandra Hospital after allegedly attempting to use a Hyundai Santa Fe to ram an ATM on Oxley Avenue in Margate. So, desperate times, people. Desperate times. Police said the man suffered a medical episode. Uh, and it had to be taken to hospital. So that's how I was caught. He suffered a medical episode. Good job, good job. Oof. So this last one is not really criminal as much as it is just upsetting. It's my last one for the day. Um, and it is a fatal chainsaw accident, which prompts calls for rules on the sale of heavy equipment. So Tasmania coroner has urged the state government to tighten restriction on chainsaw use after a man was electrocuted while felling trees. So he obviously didn't, you know, if you live in Australia, there's a lot of ads that say, look up and live. He obviously didn't watch those ads uh, because he didn't look up and therefore he didn't live. Uh, So Lawrence William Phillips, who was 62, was killed in November of 2019 while using a chainsaw to cut down two trees at his friend's rural property northwest of Lancaster. Taz Networks have conducted, contacted the friend months earlier, telling him that the vegetation was growing too close to the live power lines and that they needed to clear it, but no one came out. The service told the man that to either contact the authorised contractor or core TAS networks to temporarily disconnect the line if he wanted to clear it himself. The man did neither of those things, instead choosing to undertake the task with Phillips, who had prior tree felling experience. Look, he obviously didn't have that much experience And as far as ways to die go, that's a pretty dumb way to die. Dumb ways to die. So many dumb ways to die. 
Um, on November 6th, Phillips was using a chainsaw to cut down a large wattle tree when he the tree spun and caught into the live power line. Phillips continued to cut through one of the branches when he was electrocuted and collapsed on the ground. The friend performed CPR and emergency services were called, but Phillips died at the scene. Again, like I was singing, dumb ways to die. Uh, a coronal investigation into his death found that the 62-year-old had made numerous mistakes, including using inadequate tain- chainsaw techniques, failing to use a felling wedge. So, like I said, I don't think he had as much of experience as he was trying to make out that he did. Um, Yeah. The wedge would have stopped the tree from falling into any live power lines, which is why the you get someone professional to come out and do it because they have the wedge is kind of like a rubber stopper. Anyway, and it makes the tree fall in a specific direction. See Daisy, look what I've done. Too busy talking about that stuff. Didn't notice what I was doing. Oh, my God. His death was completely avoidable, which I agree with. Cooper said that chainsaw-related deaths are far too common in Tasmania and have investigated eight such deaths in the past five years. And, I mean, one death is too many. So eight is a ridiculous number of deaths for chainsaw-related incidences. Despite this, he's not aware of any agency body Including, um, sorry, or he's not aware that any agencies or body have taken steps to implement any of the recommendations that Cooper has put forward in the past years. It's disappointing that not only does he not get a response, um, but he hasn't even gotten any kind of response from the government department is apparently not responsible for considering his recommendations. That's all he got. He got a letter that said like a pretty lengthy one at that, that he, that the Tasmanian government is not responsible for reading his recommendations. Well then who the is, uh, the coroner reiterated his recommendations to in his report after Phillips's death. So just be the squeaky wheel, dude. I am sure some changes will come forward um, eventually. Well, I want to hope so. So that is it for me for today. I am just going to make an apology for all of the swallowing sounds and the coughing and stuff. If you heard any of that, I am so sorry. I think I am coming down with some sort of weird cold or throat thing because I sound like I smoke cigarettes and I don't. I don't smoke cigarettes. I'm not a smoker. It's not a tumor. Uh, Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to finish off this round and then I will upload these videos. So I thank you very much for washing. Washing. Yeah. If you could do my washing, that would be great. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day.